Hi, I'm Ella. Thanks so much for including me in your Power of One gathering. I'm excited to introduce you to the Power of One, our innovator's compass. I'm going to share this compass of five powerful questions that move us forward in anything we do, and some stories, and then just one instruction, and you'll start your own stories using this together. This compass was a journey. I've always sought deep inside, how do we find our greatest power to make things better in any moment? Like anyone, I've had and witnessed my share of challenges and breakthroughs. Among my immigrant parents and disabled sister, in my class in this aging central Milwaukee school building. Among my peers at MIT, where I studied when I grew up because, well, engineers literally make things better, in the teams I led and coached at the innovation firm IDEO as we improved things from transportation to finances and healthcare, and the student design teams I taught on the side at Olin College. As a mom, and now, with no time for side gigs, still teaching and working directly with educators and others, making things better in their lives and world. I've seen that that world is sticky. Whether we're professional design teams, students, teachers, leaders, parents, or anyone, to have impact, build strong relationships, or have a good life and work, we have to navigate lots of connected challenges. Immediate speed bumps, like being at our best, mastering technical challenges or our time, and working with others. And bigger stuff, like managing projects, leading groups, and navigating our changing world. Stuck and unstuck can spread. So I've worked with how-to maps for making lots of different things better. Design, leadership, systems, communication, learning, science, startups, even parenting. And I sensed they have a common compass, like maps of Nevada and Paris would, when you lay out their steps. In their own words, these practices remind us to ask the same five questions. Who's involved? What's happening and why? What matters most here? What ways are there to do that? And what's a step to try? These questions keep coming up because they're a compass to see all sides of any challenge and make it better from past and present to future and details to big picture. We can call it our innovator's compass, which gets us unstuck and moving forward in anything we do. And we can name the powerful points of view those questions give us to help us use and share them more. We know for ourselves the power of people in us and when we're stuck in even just one other person and their perspective. When we're stuck without a full picture of what's happening, we know the power of just one new observation to give us a different side, like an upside we missed, or a new detail to go on. When we're stuck overwhelmed by everything going on, we know the power of zooming out for one or two guiding principles. What matters most here, or maybe doesn't, like not having to be perfect to guide us in whatever we decide to do. When we're stuck with no way forward or only one way that's not working, we know the power of even one new idea to give us a bigger picture of possibilities. And when we're stuck with ideas but no action, we know the power of just one experiment, one step small enough with real details that we'll try it. Because we never know until we try, and again, see what happens and why. Maybe it's great, or maybe something else matters, or there's another idea. It's our compass, not one specific map or process. Most practices go the careful way that's numbered, understanding what's happening and matters most before coming up with ideas and experiments. Then there's startup style, quick planned cycles of learning from experiments. And of course, life is way messier. Consciously or unconsciously, we try something and see what happens, try something and see what happens, and occasionally realize, oh, that's a bigger idea or what really matters here. The right way is however moves us forward. We're born using these. You know how really little kids deeply notice people and everything around them, ask why endlessly, draw what matters to them over and over again, dream up great ideas, and try experiments fearlessly. The mission of innovatorscompass.org is that we have language and space to keep exploring these in all the everyday challenges we naturally face. So I'm honored to report these questions are used from preschool playground conflicts to global challenges and conferences. At the innovatorscompass.org website, you'll find all free resources people have contributed to make that possible. That includes all the graphics I've used here, as well as printable tools, 
templates for digital platforms like Mural, Miro, and Jamboards, and a free online standalone app, iCompass.me, contributed and maintained by a software engineer. I'm going to use short videos that you can find online to show the power of one student, teacher, leader, team, community, and district, and their observations, principles, ideas, and experiments. These will look linear on paper, but the journeys were likely messier. For an overview, I'll start with the second half of the two minute intro video right on the homepage. The first minute was basically this talk so far. It's not just a tool for everyday work and content work in the classroom of solving problems, but it is also being used as a tool for social and emotional learning. For me and our faculty, it just makes people think differently about a problem. They're realizing there are solutions and that everyone has a voice. We've used the Innovators Compass in parent-teacher meetings. It's like a visual way of representing that we're on the same team. Client meetings, like where we need to brainstorm things. I saw much better results having better ideas for the product or better ideas to solve like a certain problem. I've used it in training volunteers with Core Africa. To learn and know much better about how people think the problems are facing and how we can, together with the community, devise and get the solutions. I'll bring this home, literally. My own family has used this compass together to design New Year's and vacations, keep making those better, and tackle the stucks that come up along the way. As small as, my Cheerios fell on the floor. Great observation. Got an idea? Now let's hear about the power of one student and their compass to overcome current crises, pool the power of their observations and ideas with others, and realize what really matters. This story comes from Valeria Rodriguez, a middle school science teacher in Miami, Florida. On the Monday her students returned to school after Hurricane Irma, Valeria invited them to reflect on their hurricane experience with their innovator's compass, first individually on paper. They explored people who were part of their experience, their observations, what they saw and experienced before, during, and after the hurricane, what was most important to them about it, and what ideas and concrete experiments they had to make the experience afterward better for the people around them. She then gave them time and space at the whiteboard to see one another's thoughts and spark a conversation. She appreciated this chance to connect with her students as they expressed their emotions and saw their lives with a new perspective. Now for the power of one teacher, the student teacher shares how she advances her own teaching. Hi, my name is Jenny Muccelli. I'm a teacher candidate at the Woodrow Wilson Academy of Teaching and Learning. And I've been using the Compass this year for a number of um, settings where I have been thinking deeply about how to better my practice. What it's really helped me do better is collecting really concrete observations of what's really happening in the classroom. And then also really intentionally making me think about what matters most. Are they feeling safe and happy? Are they learning? Um, am I building them towards being independent learners? All of those things that are thrown around as being important. Um, it gives me an organizational tool to think about those things and then think about some ideas I might have and then ending with an experiment that I can then go and try in schools the very next day. When I've thought about designing my space for my classroom, I actually collected more observations and recompassed my space design and found that I, um, my, I grew a lot from my first iteration to the second. Now for the power of one team, let's go to another resource for stories, Twitter. Here's a team of kids using the compass to design inventions to help the elderly. They captured their observations from a senior home and in their families. They tried simple experiments like using colored tags to help identify and remember important things like keys and glasses. They gathered observations and ideas from reviewing visitors and used those to start a compass for their next iteration. That works for revisions of creative writing, reports, and other projects too. The website courses.olin.edu has an entire curriculum with lots of short videos where first-year college students also use Innovators Compass to design with and for an elderly person and to design their own teamwork. What's happening for their team, what matters most to them, things they can do to try to make it better, works for teams of all ages. And the power of one parent. You saw in the overview how a teacher uses the compass in parent-teacher meetings to help empower parents in their children's learning. I thought I'd share a personal story, working with my daughter and her preschool teachers. At our daughter's preschool, compass pieces help unstick conflicts. Working through a compass, 
with a grown-up is handy for challenges like our daughter's drop-offs, which were hard for her and her parents and teachers too. We also listen to great things happening. She's growing up in many ways. She loves her parents. What mattered most to her was time with each parent. We committed to specific experiments around her two ideas, dates and drop-offs with different parents, and 10 kisses and hugs from each of them in the morning. She reminded us to add an observation each day that went well, and each day did, except Mondays. What finally prevented the Monday meltdown was briefly inviting her to remember what mattered most to everyone and offer a different idea if she wanted. She'd usually then be happy with her 10 big kisses and hugs. Here's one leader and her assistant principal working with their staff and students. And as we find the more we do it, we have more input, input on every, every time we put an idea out, more people are putting more stickies. And so they're more willing to share mm -hmm. than in the beginning when it was, like the first compass we did had probably four notes per mm -hmm. quadrant, like each person maybe put one note and now we can't, uh, uh -huh. can't stop them. So this year we started doing some culture work and we built together a desired state and then teachers chose teams and chose priorities and these were the four priorities that they chose to focus on. So they used a compass to come up with ideas about how to move forward with their goal. So each each group self-selected so nobody was assigned and each group uh, moved forward with some experiments to try in the last quarter. Um, and we had some successes along in, in those that uh, are gonna be continued next year because the success in the experiments for the limited time we did at the start. Yeah, so the experiment we did in the teacher to teacher was we did um, afternoon game days, so with with snacks, so popcorn or whatever, and people came down during their work time and we just played games together as a staff. This is one that we did towards the end of the school year. I think it was literally the last week of school. We had six students who were involved in, a, in an incident out on the playground. So I brought them all together along with the adult that was out there. They shared their observations um, and they shared their principles. And then we ended up with three, sorry, four next steps. Um, the challenge on this one is that these kids are, will be going to middle school next year. So I do not know if they'll follow through on their plan for next year, but it worked for the end of this year and that was what we were hoping for. That's the power of an experiment. Teachers in a different school might want more time to collaborate or grade. What matters most for one group might not for another. And one last quick video bringing together the power of an entire school community, students, parents, and staff. A school in Oakland involved everyone, board, parents, staff, and students in their strategic planning. They did an online parent survey. Then they held an online meeting where parents talked in breakouts about their experiences and what mattered to them and added to this Google Jamboard. I love the way they invited breakout groups of parents to first see each other not through the topic of the school, but their favorite foods. They use Jamboards with teachers, too, who in turn use Jamboards or paper or just conversations with their students. Once everyone's thoughts had come together into a set of principles, the teachers used those to design ideas for lots of things the next year, including the first day of school. And for the district level, just a couple final tweets. An assistant superintendent rallied a conversation around evolving their virtual learning approach during COVID. And teachers capped their own learning in a district PD week by reflecting through their innovator's compass. The compass leads us not only to reflect what happened and what matters most to us about it, but also ideas and experiments to act on. So I guess that's reflection. So unleash these powers to unstick stuff and make anything better. Just ask these questions more often. As the school leader said, I find I don't always commit the compass to paper these days, but I absolutely go through it in my head. That said, Please use the resources at innovatorscompass.org, however helps. On top of all of them, there's just one instruction. With and for everyone involved, explore new possibilities in these questions. So not just fill in the blank going through the motions, but you know, trying for even one aha. 
in what's happening, what matters, or a way forward. And not holding back, putting tentative observations, principles, or ideas out there with question marks and keeping going. In other words, try for exclamation and question marks in addition to periods. That's what the more detailed techniques out there tell us. And to use all our human superpowers to get there. So ask these questions with words or pictures, or listen with our heart, or brainstorm faster so we use our gut instead of our head so much, and so on. So use your compass, use these resources, share them, and please share back your stories to me at ella at innovatorscompass.org or with others at the hashtag innovatorscompass. Thanks so much, and go be an unsticker.